um, uh, today, and, and, and we, we could hear it from uh, uh, Papa Brino's prayer, uh, the world is in uh, some sort of a chaos. Um, there is a lot of questions, uh, a lot of anxiety. Um, a lot of people are losing hope. So today's message is really to give us hope. Uh, it's, it's actually a question. Uh, is there a reason for hope? Amen. Amen. I think we, we find ourselves as in uh, Psalm 13, verse 2. Uh, uh, the Bible says, how long, this is the psalmist is crying out to God, how long must I wrestle with my thought and day after day have sorrow in my heart? Amen. How long will my enemy triumph over me. Uh, with everything that is going around, we find ourselves asking God, how long? When is this going to end? When is this storm uh, going to pass? It has been just for too long. And the question is, is there a reason for hope? Uh, as, as, as I said, when you look around, things right now don't look very good. Um, you know, after four months in confinement, uh, social distancing, uh, we all feel overwhelmed. We, 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 by now, we all feel uh, 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 that it's just getting too much. It's getting too far. Uh, we thought that this corona thing will take two weeks and it will disappear. And here we are, uh, four months later. We, we thought that with the heat, uh, uh, it will just go away, uh, but it's not going away. And we uh, 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 keep asking questions. Maybe some expectations that you had in the beginning of the year are already showing signs of failure. Um, similarly, maybe your dreams are already shattered. You had dreams for, for your household, dreams for your family, dreams for, for your job, dreams for, for your project, dreams from, for your school. Uh, but after a month of confinement, you feel like those dreams are running away. Maybe you are already uh, 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 seeing cracks in the plans that you had uh, beginning uh, uh, in the beginning of 2020. You had this wonderful plan for 2020, and now you are seeing cracks in those, those plans. Um, maybe you are finding out that the people that you were counting on um, to, to, uh, uh, to, to, to help you out, to, to bail you out, the people you, you thought would be there when the crisis hit are no longer reliable. Maybe the health issue you thought you left behind in 2019 uh, but it's still bothering you uh, now, and you are about to lose hope. Uh, maybe your finances. This year was supposed to be the year of debt free, the, the year of a financial breakthrough. Uh, but uh, you, you, you find yourself in a situation where your finances are still running in the red. Uh, maybe because of uh, Corona, uh, um, COVID-19, you feel more like this Israelite. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you are sandwiched be between Pharaoh army and the Red Sea, and you don't know which way to go. You don't know how to proceed. You are losing hope. You, you, you feel like uh, giving up. You, you wonder if you should keep marching ahead. You wonder if there is still hope, if this life is still worth living. And you ask, uh, is there a reason for hope? Uh, 
Uh, it, it is it is it is already a good thing that you are still alive because if you are watching this message, if you are listening at all, it means you are still alive, and that is a good a good thing. Why? Because uh, Ecclesiastes says in chapter nine, verse four, anyone who is among the living has hope, and and, and this is uh, uh, critical because. Unless you are dead, there is no reason to hope for a better tomorrow. And, 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 uh, and it goes, uh, the Bible goes in saying, even a, a live dog is better off than a dead lion. So the fact that you are still alive, we, you, need to be thankful to God for that. Amen. Amen. Now, maybe this is the time for you to ask this question, for all of us actually, to ask the question, who do you have covenant with? Because this is the time where you need to reach out to whoever God you have covenant with, because whatever you are facing now is just too much for yourself to handle. And, and that's why I like um, uh, um, Paul in, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Paul is saying, for this reason, I am suffering. So Paul is suffering. But I am not ashamed. I know the one in whom I have put my trust. Uh, this is important. So Paul is saying... I know I'm going through difficulties right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going through suffering right now. But I'm not ashamed. I'm, I'm not afraid. Why? Because I know the one in whom I have put my trust. I am sure, Paul is saying, he is able to keep safe that which I have trusted to him until the days he comes again. Amen. Amen. So the question is, uh, who uh, have you uh, made covenant with? Uh, I, you remember Brother Job in, in Job 19 verse 25 through 27. Uh, Job is saying, but as for me, remember he was going through a difficult times. He was going through a lot of struggle uh -huh. So he, he was losing hope, but Job is saying, but as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and he will stand upon the earth at last. So Job is saying, uh, uh, I know that I'm going through difficult times, uh, but the, the end chapter, the last chapter of my life, the, the, li the last chapter of the cycle of my life, I know how that will end because the Redeemer, my Redeemer, lives. In, in verse 26, uh, Job is saying, And after my body has decayed, yet in my body I will see God. It, this is uh, uh, the kind of faith be, be against all hope, the kind of hope beyond all hope. And in verse 27, I will see him for myself. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. I am overwhelmed at the thought. So Job is saying, uh, while I'm going through this difficult time, the reason why I have a hope is because my Redeemer is not dead, but he lives. And, and, and that is uh, very important. And, and, and I know that I will see him in my own eyes. It's like, I know at some point God will show up. And just by that thought that God will show up, I am overwhelmed at that thought. And, and that keeps my hope alive. Amen. Amen. So the, the critical thing is really to find hope in God's promise. And, and I like, uh, I think we, we, we prayed over uh, uh, this uh, scripture uh, the last two or three days 
uh, Psalm um, 119, verse 49 uh, through 51. Uh, and the psalmist is here saying, remember your word to your servant. It, 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 he's, he's talking to God, saying, telling him, remember your promise to your servant, for you have given me hope. So the reason why is telling God, the reason why I have hope, it is because of the word that you gave me. It's because of the promise that you gave me. So I pray, my brother, my sister, that you find a word from God, that you find a promise from God that you can rely on to uh, us to serve uh, through this difficult time. In verse uh, fifty. Uh, the psalmist goes on to say, my comfort in my suffering is this. Uh, the reason why I, I find some comfort, I find some hope in the middle of my suffering, it is because your promise preserves my life. Amen. Your promise preserves my life. So what is it that God has promised you that you can hold on to to preserve your own life? Remember, we said in the beginning that if you are alive, it is already a good thing. Why? Because for those who are still alive, then there is still hope. Uh, in, in, and, and then the, 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 and, and, and the Lord himself, he said, the Lord will not forsake his faithful ones. So uh, if, you, uh, if you, you, you think you are among the Lord faithful ones, hear what he's, uh, he's saying. He, hear what the Lord is saying in Psalm uh, 37 verse 28 the bible says for the lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones wrongdoers will completely uh, will be completely destroyed the offspring of the wicked will perish but the lord will not forsake his faithful ones and and in hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 the Bible says that never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Amen. So, brother and sister, God is always the same. That's what the Bible says. He is he's, uh, uh, he, 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 the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, what does it mean? Uh, first, it means that he is in control. Uh, it, it, it's very uh, important to know that uh, the one you made a covenant with is in control. Um, and, and, and in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible says, you are worthy, O Lord and God, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, power, for you created all things, and by your will, they were created and have their being. So it means that whatever is out there, whatever exists, exists by the will of God. Whatever is breathing, it's breathing because God has decided so. So if you have a covenant with the God that controls everything, uh, you should rest assured uh, that he, at some point, will have to show up. Uh, in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26, the Bible says, Jesus looked at them and said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are Possible. So it, 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 I don't know whatever you are facing now that is beyond your human capability, your human capacity, your, your human resources, your human uh, whatever you can master as a power. 
So if you have a covenant with the God of heaven and earth, the God, the Father of Jesus Christ that we call our Savior and, and, and our, our, our Savior and Lord, uh, then you should know that nothing is impossible to him. Uh, in, 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 uh, and this one is probably my, my favorite in Chronicle chapter, Second Chronicle chapter 20, uh, verse 6. Uh, and, and you remember this is Brother Josephat uh, uh, praying. So basically he's saying, Lo, the God of our, our ancestors, are, are you not the God who is in heaven? Uh, it's, it's, it's a rhetorical question because he was not expecting God to answer. Uh, this is just for the one praying, trying to convince himself that, by the way, the Lord that I'm serving, the God I'm serving, the one, the one I've, I have covenant with, he's the one that is in heaven. And this is uh, very important because if the crisis that you are facing, if the challenge that you are facing, if whatever uh, struggle that you are facing is coming from heaven, then know that the God you are serving is in heaven. Uh, and then he goes on to say, you rule over all the kingdoms of nations. And so maybe the, 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 the crisis, the danger that you are facing is coming from the kingdoms of the nations. But even though it, it's, it's that way, we know that the Lord that we serve rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. And then he, he finished this section by saying, Our power and might are in your hands, and, and no one can withstand you. Uh, it is so uh, reassuring to know that the God that we serve, he has the power and the might. So uh, it, it's true that we are going through some difficult time right now, but we know that eventually he will have uh, to show up. Amen. Amen. So, um, and, and, and there is no other God be, beside him. And, and I like it when God is boasting about himself. Uh, in Isaiah 43, verse 10 and 13, the Bible says, I mean, this is God, <laughs> God speaking about himself. Uh, you are my witnesses, uh, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have uh, chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Uh, uh, and before me, no God was from, nor will there be another after me. Uh, in verse 11, I, even, even I, I am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. <laughs> and I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, from the ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? Amen. Amen. Uh, so this is, you know, God boasting about himself. And, and, and he's, he wants you and I to be his witnesses. Have you, have you ever found another God? Have you ever been uh, uh, in touch, in contact with another God so powerful, so uh, holy, uh, so mighty, so, so loving, so, 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 so? Uh, see, see, it, it, God is asking you to, to look around and, and see if you can come up with someone you can compare, compare him uh, with, if someone else you can compare uh, God uh, with. Amen. Amen. So what really God is uh, want us to do while we are going through this difficult time, brothers and sisters, is to think of what he has already uh, done. And, and then we, we go to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, uh, verse 20, 21, uh, the Bible says, God made him who had no sin uh, to be seen for us so that in him we might become righteousness 
of God. So we know this story. Uh, basically, what Paul is saying is, uh, remember he, uh, God, on your behalf, on my behalf, he had already accepted to give up to give away his only uh, son. He, his son didn't sin, but he decided to put him on that uh, uh, cross on your behalf, on my behalf, so that through him we uh, can become uh, uh, the righteous of, of God. So basically the argument is that if God has been able to do that, uh, then whatever you are facing now as a challenge is no match with what God has already done. If he did the more, he can do the least. Amen. Uh, and, and, and you remember uh, Roman chapter 8. This is still Paul uh, talking. Roman chapter 8, verse 31 uh, through uh, 33. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Uh, and again here in verse 32, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So basically Paul is saying he gave already what is the highest that God could ever give to us. So we should expect him to do the least. Whatever challenge, might it be corona or, or financial issues or health issues, you, God wants you to remember already that he has done a great thing for you and I. Amen. Amen. So, brother and sister, what God is saying here is that you are too valuable to him. You, you, he, there is no way he will give up on you. There is no way he will abandon you. Uh, there is no way he will forsake, forsake you. Maybe it's just a matter of time. Uh, yes, because, you know, there is always a after the storm. Yeah, there, there is. Uh, you probably must have it. Um, um, no, no, you, you, you heard uh, it uh, preached so many times that the weeping may endure for a night, but uh, joy comes in the morning. Um, I, I like that, that scripture because uh, the end of the cycle comes with rejoicing. Yeah, that, that's the end of the cycle. It doesn't matter how the cycle goes, but at the end, it has to be rejoicing. There is a, a before and there is and after the, you and I, what we need to do is to 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 stay there, to 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 buckle up and and to to keep our faith so strong that we can live to uh, witness the after. And here, uh, two quick examples. Uh, the one is uh, from a brother Job uh, that we know very much. Uh, before the before of Job in Job seven. Verse uh, three and four. First, uh, he's saying, "I too." <laughs> so Job is speaking to you. He's speaking to me. Uh, he's, he's telling us his story. I too have been assigned months of futility, long and weary nights of misery. Months. Uh, we we've been in this thing for four months. Uh, uh, Job is saying, "I've been assigned months." Me too. I too been assigned, uh, li lying in the bed, and I think, when will the morning, when will it be morning? But the night drags on, and I toss till dawn. Uh, in, in, in Job 19, uh, verse 7 uh, through 10, Job says, I cry out, help, but no one answers me. Uh, I protest, but there is no justice. Uh, God has blocked my way so I cannot move. He has plunged my path into darkness. He has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head. He has demolished me on every side and I am uh, finished. He has uprooted my hope like a fallen tree. 
So that was the before. Uh, but there is always an after. Uh, in, in Job 42, from verse 10 to verse 12, uh, the Bible says, When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Uh, then all his brothers and sisters, former friends, came and feasted with him in his home. And they consoled him and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord has brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of money and go a gold ring. Ah, I like the sounds of that. Um, 12, the Bible says, So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life, even more than in the beginning. For now, he had 14,000 sheep, 60,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. Amen. My prayer, my brother and sister, is that you live long enough to witness the after of whatever struggle you are going through. Uh, another, the other example is David himself. Uh, you, you probably are familiar with this uh, Psalm 22, verse 1 and 2. Uh, David uh, saying, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Uh, why have you so far away when I groan for help? You probably feel the same way. And every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night you hear my voice, but I find no relief. Uh, so that is David praying before. Uh, but there is always an after. Uh, and in Psalm 37, uh, verse 25 and 28, this is David uh, saying, Once I was young and now... I am old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. Uh, what happened, Brother David? Uh, there was a time, it was a before, but this is an after. So before you, uh, you, 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 you judge God's faithfulness, before you judge God's uh, uh, love, before you judge uh, God's power to uh, uh, intervene, wait until the end of the story. In verse 28, the Bible says, For the Lord himself, David is saying, For the Lord loves justice, and he will never abandon the godly. He will keep them safe forever, but the children of the wicked will die. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 yes, yes, there is a reason for hope, but you and I, we just have to find a way to stay alive. Because unless you stay alive, you will not experience the after. And, and when I say stay alive here, it's both staying spiritually and physically alive. And this is critical because uh, this is the time where you, the enemy will start uh, 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 telling you some stories. will start whispering uh, some plan B uh, that don't you know uh, if you just steal, uh, if you just lie. If you, but when you do that, my brother and sister, uh, that's why you will step away from what God has planned uh, for you. Uh, in Psalm 118, uh, David is saying, I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. Uh, and, 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 and in verse 18, uh, David saying, The Lord has punished me severely, 
uh, but he did not let me die. So uh, unless God killed me, that's all right. That's all right. It is God. There's not, no arguing there. But what I'm noticing is that uh, regardless of what I'm going through, I'm still alive. Regardless of what COVID-19 COVID is doing, I am still alive. My family is still alive. And so I'm not going to kill myself uh, either spiritually nor physically. Amen. So, yes, uh, fear not, brother and sister, because God has your back. Uh, uh, in, in, in Isaiah 43, uh, uh, verse, uh, starting with verse 1, uh, here, this is what the Lord is saying. But now, uh, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid. For I have ransomed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. In verse 2, uh, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When, when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burn up the flame will not consume you uh, and in in verse 3 for i am the lord your god the holy one of israel your savior i have egypt as ransom for your freedom i gave ethiopia and seba in your place others were given in exchange for you i traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me you are honored i love you brothers and sisters that's the lord message for today that you are precious to god you are honored and he loves you so yes there is hope Keep that hope alive. May the Lord.